Hello. My name is Andreas Lang, and I'm a senior software architect working at NBW. So let's start first. What is NBW? We are one of the biggest German energy producer and supply company, but we are not only working in Germany. Maybe uh, it's more interesting for you. We have also subsidiaries in whole Europe, or some par um, countries in Europe, and even in Turkey. If you an have an electric car, you might know our app, uh, Mobility Plus, in which you can find more than, 100, uh, more than half a million of um, charge points in 17 countries in Europe, and you can then charge your electric vehicle there and pay with it. With that app, we have more than 100,000 monthly active users. Where do we build th all those apps? Or this one and others uh, in the NBW Center of Excellence Mobile. We exist since 2019, 2009, and in the last 14 years, we have built uh, over 100 apps. Uh, apps for the public app store, as well as uh, company apps in the um, custom app store. Obviously, we started uh, at back then with UIKit and uh, our architecture that we then took over uh, after some years was Viper. I'm not sure if you're still familiar with that architecture. Here I have uh, on the right side a little um, um, architecture uh, um, sketch that you have there the view, the router, the presenter, the interactor and the entity. So it's uh, therefore the name comes from. And uh, we also uh, always saw that we have a clean architecture approach in our app so that the domain and data layer is divided from the application or UI layer. Uh, when SwiftUI was introduced four years ago, we directly start or try to start to adopt it in our apps. In, um, and uh, the first thing, because we knew it already, was to do it uh, with Viper. But yeah, as you see with the bomb there, it didn't really work out because uh, the views and the navigation and the view models in SwiftUI work uh, a bit differently than in UIKit. And we also have something else in the app, or in, in, in SwiftUI, we have previews. Directly when you open uh, a new file and say you want to have a SwiftUI um, view, um, Xcode, gives this uh, template where you already have the preview inside. Now, uh, in my projects, um, I hear from the developers there a lot of prejudice from uh, regarding to previews. They say, ah, previews break easily because, for instance, in this uh, example, when you put there now um, some parameters in the view, you also need to put the parameters in the preview and so on. They say, ah, it's so slow, they always reload and they don't show really the results because there are many instance of the app and uh, depending how you do the preview, they even make an APA calls or database access. And if you have errors in the preview, it's also hard to trace. But I must say, at least in my experience, in Xcode 15, they improved that they have now a better um, error code, or you can better see what, where the error comes from. So uh, because of those prejudices, um, I see in a lot of projects uh, that the developers just do that with the preview. So they comment it out or even remove it at all, which is uh, sad, I would say, because uh, previews give a lot of advantages. You can see the view in all variants, like in scuff, the different color scheme, dark and light mode, the orientation, and also, even more important, in the dynamic types that the system offers. I think there are 12 different variants of dynamic types, so all the text sizes that you can have. And all uh, these uh, three variants, uh, you can directly s uh, select, even since last year in Xcode, uh, you don't need to change something in your preview, it's just say uh, in the bottom, in the configuration of the preview, that you want to have um, a different variant of your screen. And 
at least in my experience, uh, previews are also faster than building the app, running the app, navigating to the screen that you just want to uh, see, and maybe even change some states that you uh, have the screen in the way you want to see. And let's come also to the super goal for uh, the previews that I see. It's easy to have all possible states and X chases, and also the impossible ones, because uh, I also see in the code uh, uh, this comment, this should never happen, and therefore you don't really uh, check it anymore, but it probably it can happen, and maybe you should want then also a preview, or uh, uh, this, that the screen handles this state in a good way, and uh, therefore you should also uh, check it in the preview. So how can we achieve this goal? Uh, the first point is reducing the complexity that makes uh, so make the preview sm uh, make the view small and therefore also the preview small and uh, then they build also faster and you can do that also by separation of data and logic and uh, when you um, it's also good to make uh, the data easily mockable and the uh, um, logic preferably optional, so that you have in your preview that you don't need to make this uh, API calls or this database accesses. And also one uh, point uh, that I always uh, like is to only use primitive types in, uh, in views, so that you can in the preview easily use uh, string, bool, uh, integer, doubles. Let's uh, see. Uh, on a simple view, I called it, uh, how that would work out, because um, I like to have simple views that are combined together, like Lego blocks, um, to a bigger view or to the screen then. Let's start with a, a simple view. Oh, um, yeah, like, um, here I have the preview of, his, of it, like, uh, let's say an app where you want to check in the places that you or the cities that you have been. You see here, uh, you've been in Paris. The first one is that you've been there. The second one that you haven't been there. And uh, the code of it would be like that. You have uh, some parameters, name, country, and visited. And then a closure, what happens when you tap on the button. And the button is this uh, map pin there on the right side. So for that, the, to do the preview, it's relatively easy because you have those uh, primitive types. You can just uh, write there then the, the, yeah, the, the strings and uh, the only difference between those views, uh, between those previews is uh, the visited. So you can also just uh, have both variants of this screen in with visited uh, true and false. And for the preview, you don't need to have some action on the button, so you just set it to nil. You can even improve that uh, preview because, or this view, and then also the preview, because uh, when you have uh, several um, parameters of the view, now we have only three, but when it gets more, maybe it would be better to move uh, those to a specific model. Let's do it. So now on the right side, you see now we have the city model and um, that we use also in the view, and we can even make an extension on this model, kind of for preview, where we have a, a static function with standard parameters, and then in the preview, as you see in the bottom, we just need to change now this uh, one standard parameter visited true or false. Uh, true is already the default, so we can set it just to false, and it also reduces the code on the previews. What do we do now with all the simple views when we would want to put them in a screen with real logic? Let's say, uh, let's see what Apple says about it. Because Apple says the best way to build an app is with Swift and Swift UI. But then when you check their example apps or the videos, um, they don't really say more than that. At least I never found an example in the last four years that really says how you, you should do the architecture, uh, that you have good previews. There was only one video, I think it was um, 
four, three years ago, where they say a bit of structuring the app and to use the previews, but it only worked in their simple example. I tried it with a bigger app and it didn't really work out anymore. And I think also now Swift UI advanced in the last years and this example doesn't work at all. So we had to come up with a other or with our own approach. Um, once, so with the architecture, one thing that I also mentioned before is to split up the the app into different uh, with clean architecture. Uh, that we have the data separated from the domain, so the data has the repositories and DTOs and entities that we have as a Swift package, and in the domain layer we also have it as Swift in a Swift package as the model and the service, and then. It comes the app layer or the UI layer, and obviously we, this is just uh, we don't have only one domain uh, package or data package, but for each feature another one. And in the app UI layer, we have now uh, that was our approach. We have the logic that can be optional. So with dependency injection, we can say ah, for the previous we don't want to inject it, and in the production app uh, we want to inject it, or we can even mock it, because uh, yeah, we can say with a dependency injection, yeah, for the preview we want to have a mocked logic, so uh, maybe we don't have to have then the API calls there, but just directly static data. Then uh, the logic uh, changes the state, and the state updates then the view, and uh, state is also uh, in the view implemented that way that you can easily mock it. And yeah, and the view uh, gives an the action to the logic again. So this is uh, kind of Redux or similar also what we saw before with the TCA architecture. Uh, but we only do that in uh, for each view separately. We don't have one state for the whole app because that seemed a bit too complex in our use cases. So um, let's already come to an end. What are the takeaways that you should um, take? <laughs> How did I pro uh, proceed? Um, previews play an important role in development, at least in my development. It's uh, important that you use Swift packages for um, that you split up your code in Swift packages, that uh, the build times um, are reduced, mainly also the build times in the for the previews, that you have small and reusable views, and that you build larger views uh, via the composition of smaller ones. And also an important point is to separate the logic from the data, that you can mock the data and also uh, mock the logic or that maybe in uh, most of the previews you don't even need to have the logic. And uh, you should build the data flow from the app uh, from bottom to top. So Swift UI previews with the right architecture makes development more efficient and at least for me makes fun. Hmm. Thank you very much. Here you have my um, if you have my contact data with the email address and LinkedIn and Mastodon, you can also find that when you scan this QR code. It's also embedded there. And if you have questions, please contact me. Uh, about uh, about previews, uh, so you, you said that um, Xcode 15 uh, runs notably uh, better on Swiss preview. Uh, did you have like, any examples for, for, for that? At least in my experience, the, the error codes that it puts, or before it, I always had, or most of the time when there was an error in the preview, I had to go somewhere in the log folders inside the library folder to see the, the log of the preview. And now in the last days I saw it when I had an error uh, or directly in Xcode, what was the problem? So for instance, when you have an envi environment um, set, uh, in your view, but you don't set it in the preview, then you get an error because it's not there. And uh, I think, when I remember correctly, now in Xcode it's even uh, it says that it's missing, and before I had to check all these uh, build or runtime logs to find what the error was. Right. 
Um, yeah. Yes, uh, SwiftUI is bringing obviously lots of questions regarding architecture. Do you think at some point we will have some kind of main architecture that will rise uh, where everybody will use this one uh, with SwiftUI? It's difficult because um, I think, like, let's see the TCA, I think that's very complex, the architecture, and it's good. I, I think it's a, good, a nice architecture, but probably too complex for most of the apps. So I think uh, it depends a bit uh, what is the use case of your app. Um, if it's a simple view uh, where you can maybe don't need really an architecture, what I I support it. You always have to <laughs> think about the architecture, but uh, or you have the TCA, which is very complex, and maybe for some developers, or when you have bigger teams, or when your developers uh, change also regularly because you have maybe external resources, then maybe it's also not the correct architecture. So I think it's depending on your uh, what you want to achieve with we, the app. We we could call it MVC UI, yeah. which would be quite. <laughs> Quite a good name, or MVVM UI. <laughs> I mean, also in UI kit, you had, uh, you had, for instance, Viper or other things. Speaking about Viper, um, do you actually um, try or even manage uh, to keep a Viper architecture uh, with, with SwiftUI? I tried in a mixed app. <laughs> there it was more possible, but in a um, only Swift UI app, I don't see it really because then what do you do with the root router or with the view model and what is the interactor in the in yeah. Swift UI? So there, I don't see it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you.